Hi there, welcome to Guitar Centric. And we are here today to talk about some interesting things in the world of guitars. Mm. Ooh. Namely, uh, well, first off, Fender. Fender's new reissues. Yeah, Fender have done a new range, which it, they, they kind of barking up the reissue tree where it's still doing, you know, trying to make it, they're saying modernised, but to me, like they're doing a 50s Telecaster, a 60s Telecaster, a 50s Strat, a 60s Strat, 60s Jaguar, 60s Jazzmaster, and then some 60s and 70s basses, P basses, Jazz basses. So, I mean, the way the way the website sort of reads is they're kind of trying to say, you know, it's new, but it's not. Mm. And that's, mm. that's, that's the overwhelming feeling I get from it. Uh, I don't know what I feel about it. I mean, do we need another 50s strat? This, this is the thing. It's, it's odd with the reissues, right? Because we, 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 lots of people in the guitar, people in the guitar community, they idolise these 50s, 60s and 70s era models because they're kind of, you know, iconic. They're, yeah. they're supposed to be linked to so many awesome guitarists of the time that pioneered the instrument, mm. that recorded some great albums with these instruments. So people think, oh yeah, well, we'll get that type of reissue thing because this is really going to capture the sound of the bands that, we love and that we're influenced by. I get that. But at the same time, um, why aren't we doing things like, I don't know, 80s reissues? Well, if you look at it this way, do you think <laughs> if, do you think of Hendrix? I mean, Hendrix yeah. is a pioneer, yeah. okay? Yeah. Hendrix is very famous for his 50s, 60s strats because that was the era he was alive, he was playing. So do you think in the 80s that Fe uh, the Hendrix wouldn't have tried something with a Floyd Rose, or yeah. he wouldn't have tried something more modern. Exactly, and then you look at some of those some of those players that kind of did um, hop over into into the eighties, you know, from the, that established themselves in the seventies. The only sort of example I can think of that comes straight to mind is Aerosmith, right? Yeah. So Aerosmith, uh, Joe Perry, he used to play loads of different guitars, loads of different vintage guitars, mm. loads of different manufacturers. He wasn't like one a one brand guy. And then in the 80s, he started using some sort of flashier type, sort of super strat type things. I think maybe some Kramers yeah. or something along those lines. Those, those, those kind of guitar companies that were innovating back in the 80s. So, yeah, it makes you wonder, would, you know, what would someone like Jimi Hendrix or, you know, some of those guitarists that are no longer with us? Well, would they be playing something more innovative? Would they be exactly? Would they have yeah. adopted, you know, Parker Flies or something like that? K think, is it K Kishel? Kiesel. Kiesel. Kiesel, yeah. 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 Would they be playing Kiesels or things like that? Who exactly. knows? Who knows? I mean, for that, for me, it's like, you know, Fender, and I have so much respect for Fender as a brand. I think they do so many good guitars from varying price points, and I think you only have to look at, you know, varying sources on YouTube to mm. see how good even sort of the low-end squires are, mm. oh, you how, know, how great Fender guitars are. But for me, you know, I don't want to see the, the rougher edges of a vintage reissue. I want a guitar, you know, it gets better. I, mm. I mean... I want something that's easier and nicer to play and, and, you know, improving. I think that's that's the whole thing. What are we as humans if not evolving? Mm, yeah, exactly. I mean, and this, this, this is the interesting thing about Fender. And I, I will give, give Fender the credit for this because they have been a company that has taken some of their most, you know, iconic designs and they've put twists on it. They've, they've tried to sort of modern, at least modernise it and offer um, guitar players something innovative. You know, they've taken a stretch style body but then added different types of pickup switching mm. systems different bridges different saddle uh, material different nut material different you know tuners all sorts of things so at least they're given that range they're saying to people look if you really want the the really vintage vibe mojo mm. sort of that sort of type of thing then great you can have it but here's you know an improvement here's mm. a is a reinvention of the wheel, so to speak. Well, I mean, with market share, you know, look at obviously what's happening with Gibson. Mm. If they were now to release, you know, that that killer model, mm. you know, everyone would be talking about Fender, yeah, completely. Yeah. And I, and also with Fender, and again, credit where's due, their new pedals look awesome. Oh, okay. I I really want to try the distortion. Yeah. Um, I mean, it does help. They tested it all through the Hot Rod Deluxe. Like, oh yeah, loads, yeah, loads yeah. of the yeah. videos, and you know, they sounded so nice. I'd love that tone. By the way, you should watch that video. The our can it metal test? Yes, because yeah. a hot rod deluxe, it can metal. And that's another thing with Fender, I suppose. I think I started off this maybe having a bit of animosity, but no, I <laughs> love and respect the Fender. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so the other thing about this, this idea of you know Fender giving these reissues out, is it got me thinking, to what extent should we still be using what would possibly be considered obsolete hardware? Mm. So... Prime example of this is the Fender Jaguar or Jazzmaster style um, bridge, right? I, I've played them, and there's not enough of a there's not enough of an angle 
as the strings go from the body over the, over the saddles to kind of keep them in place. So if you're you know, kind of tucking into your guitar and you're strumming away at it or you're bashing out some quite powerful notes, the string can come off the saddle, right? Mm. Now that's really not good. That's something that you, you'd think when they were putting the guitar together. They go, oh guys, um, this is happening. Perhaps we should go back to the drawing board. Nah, just no, just release the QA it. guy fell asleep for a while, <laughs> yeah. and then Fender released the Jazz Master. Yeah, is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't know. But you think to yourself, okay, so we've we've realised that this was a mistake. This isn't the best design. So let's not reproduce this. Mm. But it kind of has been allowed to reproduce with this mentality that I guess the guitar buying public has about vintage gear. And yeah, you know, we're not gonna we're not here to tell people what to buy. What, no, what to like? That's not what we're. We're just we're just spreading our own opinions on these yeah. things. Quite honestly, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's many people who are clamouring after a Jaguar or a '50s Strat. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, but Jump maybe they are. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm certainly not. But, yeah. <laughs> but maybe maybe some people are. And you know that that's all that's all well and good. That's what you're into. But it kind of makes you think. Well, there's so many other things that work have worked on guitars before that just shouldn't really be there now. Mm. Um, like. One of the other things that really sticks out for me is the old style Gibson strap buttons. Yeah. Now I know we have strap locks nowadays. I know there's loads of different ways to keep your guitar strap secure, but back in those days, when you got like a really heavy Gibson Les Paul, for example, with really tiny, tiny little strap buttons, that a strap is just going to go whoom, you know, land. It's like you said, those huge floor. guys come out the gym with little yeah. tiny legs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't match up, does it? No. And so you think, I know that Gibson have probably uh, updated their strap button design since then, but on perhaps on the vintage ones, um, people keep coming back for them. So, you know, why do we do that? Mm. It's a good point, isn't it? You know, why do we come back for these things that don't really, don't really uh, improve the guitar? I mean, for me, it's like how you still get noisy pickups on mm. guitar. Mm. Just irks me so much you know like the the secret services can pick out a conversation clearly <laughs> from a crowded like uh, you know like a, a town square yeah. <laughs> and they can pick out one person in there and yeah. hear exactly every word they're saying yeah how can we not when a string is a couple of centimeters off a pickup mm -hmm. how can we not replicate that noise without making a ton of noise yeah and that frustrates me yeah yeah these yeah. things these things this is we're gonna have to build a guitar aren't we i think so we're gonna have to I, do it I'd love to see, like, because I mean, there's elements of every guitar I think I'd take. I mean, I'd take so many bits out of a Fender, a Gibson, a PRS, and I'd mm. love just to see what we could build to put it together as, as one. You know, like, if we weren't, like, for example, you can get loads of custom build companies, but if we weren't constrained by, you know, saying it had to be, you know, if Fender went to make a Les Paul, yeah. they wouldn't put a Gibson headstock on no, it. You no, know, no, for example, yeah, 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 as you can yeah. see, like, with the PRS Silver Sky, you know, yeah. it's a. It, it's a strat with a PRS neck yeah, and everything. Yeah. But you know, I'd love to see what we could do and you know what everyone in the world could do if we built that one guitar that everyone sort of wanted. Yeah, or yeah. at least the one guitar that everyone could agree, like, yeah, that's that's yeah. got everything we the want. The guitar with no limits. The guitar, like yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's to be continued. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then moving on to the um the PRS new PRS SE seven string guitar. Interesting, because they've They've, they've, they've released an SE seven string before, mm. um, but this new model has a, a longer scale length. It's 26 and a half inch scale. So it's kind of creeping towards the baritone scale. Yeah, baritones are 27. Yeah, about 27. Seven, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it's interesting that they're going for this longer scale approach now because PRS's thing has always been about having um, a, a 25 inch scale. That's their sort of their standard scale mm. length. And some of their other models have gone into this sort of 24 and a half inch scale length, which is quite short really, 24 and a half inches, shorter than a, a Gibson, typical Gibson scale length. It's all about size. Uh, yeah, it's what, you do. <laughs> it's what you do with it, so so, so we're led to believe. Um, so yeah, um, with, with the scale length now, so this extended scale length for seven string guitars, um, it's good. It's a good thing because I was always really sceptical about guitar manufacturers that make seven string guitars, so guitars that are meant to be lower, you know, tuned lower, mm. Um, with shorter scale lengths, and I think I think Epiphone still do a, a, an Epiphone seven string Les Paul, which is twenty four and a quarter, a three quarters inch scale, mm. which is short for a, a you know a, a low a low B to be vibrating over. Yeah. And it, given that a lot of people will tune that B down to perhaps A or maybe even lower, that's you know a short scale. So this move towards twenty six and a half inches, I think, is a real great thing. So yeah. Perhaps PRS have gone. Hmm, maybe the maybe the twenty five inches wasn't 
wasn't long enough for uh, the, the the extra string. But yeah. you know, so we'll, we'll we'll add a bit on, which I think is a great idea because I'm a seven string player as well, mm. and I even find on a twenty five and a half inch scale that it's just still not quite long enough for for yeah. for a low B. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Maybe maybe our viewers have got a different experience with it. I don't know. Well, I know that's sort of bringing me to like baritones. Mm. I think I. I mean, again, PRSSE, the, I think it's the 277, I think it yeah. is, the baritone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, man, that's lovely. The only problem for me is, like, I really want something with P90s. Yeah. Uh, and I love the idea of that, but I don't necessarily, I think, I just don't know what use I'd get out of it. I don't know if it's worth mm. popping the P90 cherry yeah. for, uh, for a baritone. I mean, that's just me. Well, there, there, are, there are some people that play in standard tuning, but on a baritone scale length, because they like the clarity that mm. that extra scale length gifts they're playing you know so it could be worth trying there's, oh, yeah. there's nothing to say you can't put just a regular set uh, regular set of strings on a baritone scale and, and playing standard tuning you just have to intonate Ooh, it slightly. yeah that'd be nice yeah. actually i've never never thought of that so yeah. that's can a good point yeah it can be done oh. <laughs> right now i'm gonna have to leave my wallet with you i think i can't i can't <laughs> do this i can't do this i'll be the keeper yeah. of the purse yes yeah. okay fair enough <laughs> so is there anything else that's getting you Gassing, what are you gassing for? I mean, I'm obviously, yeah, PRS 277 and yeah, probably. Well, in terms of just what I've, what I've seen recently, um, and this isn't necessarily um, a, a necessarily a new model, but we were looking at Gordon Smith guitars the other day. Mm. And Gordon Smith is one of those brands, I think they're, I'm pretty sure they're British based, a British based brand there you go there we go don't say that when you're drunk no 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 a british based brand um that have kind of do you know, small runs of guitars you know they're, mm. not, they're not they don't have a massive production facility um but they, they they're sort of giving out some interesting versions on hybrids of different models so kind of les paul meets telecaster customization uh, ballpark of guitars mm. and I, I like that i like that approach of saying let's take yeah, a bit of this, a bit of that, and put it together. Sometimes it has hideous results, and I mean, like we've seen one that just yeah, there was one that yeah, else. it kind of looked like a whale. Actually, thinking about it, it was <laughs> yeah, big, yeah, round, yeah. and blue with yeah. a large bit, large sort of strip of white on it. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't for me. No. But I mean, again, like from what we spoke about a few weeks ago, for me, like the, I like the double cut and sort of the Yamaha Revstar style body, mm. and they do one. I think it's the GS2, which is one of their sort of their bass lines. Mm. But the thing I love about Gordon Smith is that you can. It's it's they you can buy them in shops so you can go and pick one up but online you can pick one almost like you know a base point and then mm. customize it really easily really fully um, so you can end up with a hybrid whatever really yeah. I mean some of the some of the options they offer are great yeah uh, and they look nice hmm. they're well photographed guitars I must add that on their website everything looks so nice you kind of you know it's like when you go to a restaurant. You only know, go to those really horrible restaurants in Spain or something. You have the pictures <laughs> of the meal and it's all covered in old coffee. It doesn't look good. You don't want to buy that. But, <laughs> and I mean, yeah, with Gordon Smith, they look good. You kind of want to go and just eat it. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Photo, well photographed, not photoshopped, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I'd, I'd say so. I'd say it, it, they don't look like renders or anything. And they, they definitely good. check their photos for chips and the paintwork. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Gibson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's that's what that's what you know. I've got my initial bit of gas with this yep. week. Um, not quite you... bloating yet. It no, is... not bloated yet. No, yeah. not bloated yet. No, I, I think I can keep my. I think I can keep my wallet in my trousers. Still. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, for me, again, it's that it's the baritone. Or I mean, I'm really keen on seriously going for one of these Fender uh, distortion pedals. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, sounded really good. I did an experience yesterday with an Eggnator amp, which mm. got my fancy because uh, you can sort of you can change the tubes in it. With it, it's got a blend between six L sixes, these sort of Fender type tubes, mm. and the EL thirty fours, which is the sort of the Marshall sound, and it's just one knob, you know, on each channel as well. So you can have different channels sounding differently. That really got me going until I saw the price, and yeah, I'm happy with my happy with my Hot Rod Deluxe for now. Yeah, <laughs> love the one you're with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but I think we are going to definitely have to look at building, you know, this sort of a player's guitar, you know, because yeah. when I mean, we talk about these, we can pick probably any guitar in the world and say things that we'd like and things that we wouldn't like. Yeah. And I'd love just to see what the world would want. It'd be good to get your thoughts as well on what types of things you think would work together well as a, as a kind of a... A dream instrument, yeah. This this fantasy guitar, mm. and because a lot of people say things like, 
oh yeah, wouldn't it be great if you could have this neck with this body and, mm. and you know these pickups? But then, because you can't actually, well, they've not always been made, you can't always put those combinations together, how would we know if it would sound really good? Exactly. We just don't know. No. <laughs> uh, or how it would play well. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting sort of way of, of, of approaching things. Would these combinations of things work? Mm. And you know, what combinations of things do you think would work? What um, you know? What types of pickups would go with different bodies, uh, different scale lengths, and stuff like that? Yeah. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, what would be a massive no-no? What would be a an ideal thing? So mm. it'd be good to get your, get your yeah, definitely. So I mean, comment in the boxes below that way. <laughs> I think they've always been below, haven't they? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Been a, come on up here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and and leave a like as well. Yes, please, please do. do. Yeah, and we'll see you soon. Bye.